Where exactly Borneo is? Borneo is a huge island sitting at the geography center of maritime Southeast Asia, span the equatorial belt within the tropical climate zone, which means climate of Borneo is relatively stable with minor temperature variation. It has the binormal model monsoonal pattern, which are the wet seasons from November to March and the dry season from May to October, receiving between 2,000 mm to 4,000 mm of rainfall annually. Borneo is also an island shared by three national jurisdictions, the Sultanate of Brunei, the Malaysia state of Sabah and Sarawak, and Kalimantan, Indonesia with a total area for about 740,000 square kilometers. It is also the third largest island in the world comes after Greenland and New Guinea. Borneo encompasses several ecoregions, ranging from lowland to mountain rainforest, to peat swamp and mangrove land, to tropical grassland and alpine meadow. In this episode, I will walk you through lowland deterocarp rainforest of Borneo. This ecoregion has massively taken over more than half the island. It says to be more than 30 million years old. It has the highest plant diversity and density in the world. Lonely rainforest in Borneo is mainly built up by the Dipterocops and Spurgeon species, where it can tolerate low in nitrogen of algae soil and insected soil. However, the invasion of large scale land exploitation can lead to Forest degradation. Lowland Dipterocarp forest has been listed as vulnerable on WWF. The changes on the elevation in lowland rainforest have given us a different perspective on these ecoregions. For a lower elevation, there are countless trees from the legume family and massive straggle feed pond. And also, we can discover the aromatic couple tree and can be found growing in the coarse sandy soil on moderate slopes. When we lift up a bit to a higher elevation, we can see a lot more large timber trees and white fruit trees everywhere. For the elevation between 500 meters to 1000 meters, there are 17 species of Brachyrhizia can be found. The Terracop is a type of tropical hardwood tree that can grow huge and tall. Something very unique about this species is the irregular flowering pattern that matches the occurrence of El Nino. Happens at the same time in the same area. In Borneo alone, there are more than 270 types of these terracob and more than half of them are endemic. And why is it so important? Borneo rainforest acted as carbon sink, storing up to 0.43 megatons of carbon a year by per hectare of forest land. It is the major biodiversity hotspot in the world, teeming with endless diversity of unique plants and animals. It is also a sacred land for indigenous people, holding their livelihood and culture. Scientists have discovered more than 400 new species on the island since 1994. It's an average of more than 3 new species per month. This fascinating finding including the striking zebra street fish, the copstain bronze back snake, the spectacle flower packer, a new end species called Lodemira's reticulate, and a rather slug in the world in Areofatidae family. Just like this enormous six insects they found near Kunongkina Paru Park in Sabah, it measured up to 66.7 cm. Despite as the world's largest insect, it has very little known about its biology and ecology. There are many new frog species have been discovered in lowland green forests of Borneo like this Balalong tree frog and the change color frog. 
The changing color float is a species known only in Tapping Valley near a very small stream. So in making it highly endemic and unusual. Lowland rainforest is also a secret garden home many extremely rare orchid species. Since 2017, there is no less than 37 new orchids were discovered in the Borneo, or highly valued for their exotic aroma and aesthetic beauty. As in the picture, you can see, Rock Chai Slipper Orchid is a rare and endangered species that endemic to Kinaparu Park in Sabah. It takes 15 years to grow and bloom. And many more rare wild orchids can be discovered in the forest. And who are the stakeholders of Borneo? The local people and indigenous communities such as Dayak and Penang tribes. The government of three jurisdictions. And also a numerous international and regional known government organizations. Borneo Rainforest has been identified as one of the deforestation hotspots. It has the largest deforestation base in the world, with an average 350,000 hectares clear every year. Lowland Rainforest is under degrading at relative rates that are higher than those of the other tropical regions. Many endemic species are facing threat of extinction. However, they still do have many ways to underpin the species in Borneo that needing the attention. Like most of the exotic and endemic species of Borneo has been listed on the relief by IUCN. Even though we still can see the species have been driving into the direction of extinction. You may find this species familiar. Yes, this is Maury, from the movie for Rise of the Planet of the Earth. Known for their big single factor, Borneo orangutans are the largest of all mammals, spending most of their time in trees. This great app shares 96.4% of our human beings and have highly intelligent. Due to the habitat fragmentation, we have loosened more than half of the Borneo orangutans in the past 16 years. Manis javanica, or known as Malayan pangolin, can be widely found in Sabah. With declining in number due to the high level of poaching and hunting for its meat and scales, had driven by the Thai demand from China market for some unscientific and unethical medication purpose. And they have been listed critically endangered on the red list. Helmut the Hornbill, or Rhinoceros Hornbill, is one of the largest birds in rainforests of Asia. They spend their entire life on treetops, found in the primary forest throughout Borneo. This spectacular hornbill has been outlived from near threatened to critical endangered owing to severe hunting pressure for its cars, or also known as known as red ivory and as a result of the habitat loss from logging and agricultural conversion. The monkey, or also known as long-nosed monkey, is endemic to Borneo. It's another large mammal that tries to survive under the pressure of fragmentation and forest degradation. However, we do have the fear that the uplisting of these mammals from vulnerable to critically endangered. Yellow Mirandi tree, also Soil Fertikina tea, is one of the main types of hardwood species in Borneo. It is also the tallest tree species in tropical latitude. The declining number due to timber exploitation and forest degradation has listed them as vulnerable. Resistive flower, the largest flower in the world, is really rare and hard to locate 
and only blow them for a few days in a time. They have been leaked on the ISDN is as vulnerable due to their unique characteristics. Conservation in Borneo have faced many challenges, including the nature cause of climate change and forest fire, and also some social economy factors such as large-scale agricultural transformation, concession and illegal logging for timber, and also corruption of a national institute. Climate change and exaggerated weather conditions has strongly linked to the fire activities in Borneo. In 1997, Northern Borneo suffered a very severe drought that linked to the occurrence of El Nino. El Nino is a climate phenomenon that occurs when a vast pool of water in the western tropical Pacific Ocean becomes abnormally warm, and the increasing of catastrophic fire has affected the biological cycle of the pterocarps forest, causes a further loss of habitat and loss of forest cover canopy. The change of forest condition has also led to a high mortality in the young species, especially those in endangered state. Proliferate of commercial and illegal logging activities due to increasing demand on hardwood timber from all over the world. These valuable timbers are being locked on unsustainable cutting cycles from primary or secondary forests. And these locked forests require a long period of time to recover back to their original plant richness. The national parks surrounded by these logging areas has also failed to recruit and regenerate these precious deterocarp species due to the age effect. The growth of population has determined the transformation of pristine rainforest into urban development and profitable agriculture land. Agriculture is the major threat, with uncontrolled burning continues to severely impact Borneo's forests. Borneo is said to have the largest central palm oil plantation production and contribute to at least 60% of the world oil palm production. Corruption is the root problem behind the destruction of the Borneo rainforest and the displacement of indigenous people. The political connected criminal has protected by the local governor and leave no progress in resolving these problems. Many indigenous tribes in Sabah and Sarawak try to barricade the rainforest behind them to start a logger from destroying their homeland. However, most of these efforts has in no value. Rainforest is indispensable to indigenous and their livelihood. However, they are facing the threat of losing their land rights, their homeland and their youth culture. Fortunately, many NGOs such as WWF and Rainforest Trust has driven the restoration program and management plan to help restore the tropical rainforest and conserve Borneo ecosystem. The Heart of Borneo Initiative is a trilateral program commissioned by WWF in an effort to conserve the biodiversity of the central piece of undeserved forest for the benefit of the people who rely upon it through a network of protected areas, sustainable management of forests, and other sustainable measures. United Nations RED program is providing an incentive to developing countries such as Malaysia and Indonesia to reduce the greenhouse gases emissions from deforestation and forest degradation and to enhance the carbon storage by improving the forest management. This project is assessed based on national or sub-national level for interim measures and work alongside with WWF in combating the deforestation issue in Borneo. Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil is a supply chain certificate standard to encourage the growth and use of sustainable oil palm products through credible global standards and engagement of stakeholders. The certificate is 
does effectively lower deforestation by 33% in the past 20 years in the slow pace and rate for about 6.6% per year. It is also fortunate to see countries like Indonesia to decided to set aside 45% of the forest land to be part of the conservation planning and to serve this part of the forest as the lungs of the world. And we are hoping for more good news and bring to light for more new discovery of Bronio rainforests.